Oh, it says that I'm not approved for LinkedIn Live. So let me just edit this really quickly. Okay. And then we'll do this again. Save changes. Great, we're live. <laughs> Woohoo. Exciting. Good to be hi here. There. Yeah. Hi there, Kareen. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Yeah, feeling good about things today. Excellent. So glad to hear it. Um, and and one of the things that I wanted to mention to people, because they can see your name printed right down at the bottom of the screen. So if you are from the United States, you're probably going to want to pronounce that as Corinne. Um, but it is actually Corinne. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I'm Corinne, rhymes with green. Um, I'm from Ireland originally, moved to Guatemala about six years ago, was there for four years working with nonprofits, and then while I was there, met a guy from Utah, which now has me here, we're married, um, and I set up my own social media marketing business last year, um, so I've, this is in my, I'm in my second year now, so it's going really great. Um, it's a big change from the nonprofit world, but I still feel like I'm getting to serve people and serve business owners through what I do. So it's really great. Perfect. So um, for everybody that's watching on the L marketing pages, um, Corrine is one of our social media managers. So she actually works with some of our clients. We brought her in um, specifically for social media. And one of her areas of expertise is Instagram. She is truly a rock star at Instagram. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is how to manage and grow your Instagram account during a time that is such a roller coaster. It's really unprecedented. And so, um, you know, one of the things with social media that's so important is that it is social. And Corrine wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I did. I just wanted to remind everybody to, to stay social on social media. So if you have an Instagram account for your business, um, know that more people are online now than ever before. And yes, they are connecting more with friends and family and people they know around the world. Um, but they also want to be able to see um, and hear from businesses that are responding during this crisis. So whether you are um, slowing down your sales pitch on Instagram, but you also want to share um, how you're responding to the crisis. So are you donating to food drives? Are you giving personal protective equipment to healthcare workers? Are you still being able to keep your staff on? All these different things. Um, it's really important to share right now, but you also want to stay relevant and front of mind for people. So don't just post content and disappear. You want to be able to respond to every comment, every message. You want to be able to reach out to people that may will maybe will buy from you in the future. So you want to stay front of mind for them and you want to be really authentic and engage with them um, on a personal level right now. I love what you said about staying front of mind. Um, that is something that I think a lot of businesses struggle with, especially if you've had to like shut down completely. Yeah. You know, if you're if in your you're in one of those industries, barbershops or tattoo parlors or you know beauty salons or gyms or um, you know you're in into massage or you've got a restaurant. A lot of businesses or industries are highly impacted. You can't meet face to face. You can't have people in. You can't have customers walk through the doors and you may be mandated that you're closed. So what do you post if you're closed? Should you post at all? Yeah, I think you should definitely post. Um, you could probably cut back your posting. You don't need to post every day. If you're posting, you know, three times a week maximum on Instagram, I think that's enough. Um, I think you should be thinking about who your customer is, who is your ideal client, um, and what do they want to hear about right now. So some people might want to be distracted completely from what's going on in the world, or some people might want to know how you're responding and know more about what's happening in the world. Um, so I think if you can think about who you're talking to and who you want to reach, that's step number one. Um, and then the second point I would make um, is to to don't be not be afraid to still talk about your business. Um, so if you've com completely closed, 
you can still maybe talk about what you as a business owner are doing um, in the meantime. How are you working to grow your business behind the scenes? Um, still, it's okay to talk about your business. This is your livelihood and this is how people know you. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to, to talk about that as well. Um, yeah, I agree completely. And the thing that I would tack on is it like it feels counterintuitive to stop to, to keep posting when you're closed. But mm -hmm. the other thing to keep in mind is social media is a bit of a numbers game. And so if your account goes dormant, if you don't post for two weeks, for a couple of weeks or for 30 days, guess what? The algorithms that run those social media channels think that you're out of business and they automatically stop showing your posts to as many people. And so if you've got what we call a dormant account, um, not as many people are going to see your post once you do open back up and once you do start posting again. So you don't want to fall into that dormant category according to social the social media algorithms. Yeah, it makes it really hard that when, when you reopen, it makes it hard for people to know that you've opened again because nobody will have been seeing any activity from you at all. So definitely stay active. Um, stay active in the post, but also on Instagram, use stories. I think stories is a really great way to show the human side behind your business and to show how you're responding right now um, and to show what you're doing. Um, so sometimes people don't like to show their face on there, but I think showing the human side of your business and telling your story and sharing the story of your business is really crucial right now. So definitely try to get on stories a few times a week as well. That is one area where we've really tried to pivot with a lot of our clients, showing the faces. Yeah. Of, of people even more so we try to do that anyways but I think really telling the story of and showcasing these are the people that are being impacted um, by our by our business being closed or shuttered or reduced or that are being impacted positively by us being able to stay open even if it's just a little bit here are the people that you're supporting and helping they're here in your community and that I think makes a big difference as well. Um, you know, you think about Facebook and Facebook, the word face literally is in the name of the of the platform. People love seeing faces and that applies to Instagram too, I think. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think one of the biggest things I'm trying to do for my own business and for our clients is to remind them to market how you want to be marketed to. I think that's a great phrase to keep front of mind when you're trying to figure out what to post on social media. Um, and the reality may be that one, you've closed and nobody can buy from you, but two, even if you have an online business and you have products to sell, people may not be able to buy from you because they've lost jobs or they're on strict budgets. Um, and no amount of amazing marketing is going to be able to make somebody buy your product right now if they just don't have the money to do it. Um, so instead of trying to sell, just be really authentic and social um, and engage with people on different level right now. I think that's key. And I think be, when when we're saying be authentic, you know, what does what does that look like? Because that is authentic is kind of a, a social media buzzword that we toss around a lot. Mm -hmm. But like, what's an example of being authentic, a brand being authentic? I think it is sharing the good, the bad and the ugly um, in your business because we work mostly with small business owners um, and not every day is going to be a great day for a small business owner, especially now. Um, so share your wins, share your successes, but also it's so I, I think it's OK to be like. Share. Yeah, to, to share the not so great things like when you have to close your doors, let people know and let people know that it's hard, but that you really want to come back um, stronger after this. Um, or, you know, share something like you have pivoted your business slightly. So let them know that they can still buy from you and still support you in this way. Um, and what that means to you as a business owner and to your team. Um, if you could do um, interviews with people on your team, you know, let people know how they're coping with it. I think there's a lot that you can do to kind of show and share your story and all of your story. I agree. I think that the other, there's another component to that, 
we touched on it briefly earlier, but showcasing what it is, how how you as a business or as a business leader or a member of your community, how you're supporting other people, how you're giving yeah. back. Um, and that makes a difference as well. Sometimes we're not great about shouting from the rooftops when we are giving. It feels mm -hmm. like um, it feels like tooting our own horn, but now is not the time to be squeamish about that. If you are doing something great for your community, talk about it. Yeah, this is something I've struggled with myself because you don't want to feel like you're bragging on social media. But the reality is that the, what you're doing is a fact. It's a fact that you're helping your community or it's a fact that you're giving back. So don't be afraid to show the facts. And some, if you can somehow kind of separate the personal feelings around it to just that it's the fact that your business is doing this, I think you might be you might you might find it easier to share those things. Absolutely. Um, so some of the things that I have seen businesses doing that are really working on on being authentic on social media are things like. Um, we work with a lot of chefs and restaurants, of course, and they're very much struggling right now. So chefs posting like their recipes of things that they're making from home yeah. and doing a story around that or showing what they're feeding their kids or showing how they're stocking their fridge at home. Yeah. Um, I even saw one chef that showed like showcased the principles you use in restaurants, which is called first in, first out, where you. Oh, yeah. You know, where you make sure that you've got a strict rotation so that food is being used properly. So it's not going to waste, which is something that all of us can use right now since we're spending more time at home and cooking from home. Um, have you seen anything else interesting out there that people are doing? Um, I've seen a lot of interesting things done on Instagram stories. Um, and there are things that people can easily share um, and link back to your account. So whether it's um, like there was one called a jar full of me and somebody had drawn this little jar um, and then it was up to everybody who found it to put in um, little gifts and pictures within the jar and share it. And then they could tag that. I think it was a graphic designer that did it for mm -hmm. her small business. I but love that it. went huge. And I saw so many people posting and sharing that in their stories. And it was a fun way to link back to that person's account, but to also share more about who you are and what you're doing right now, um, now that more of us are at home. So I think um, sharing different graphics and things like that on your Instagram stories is really great. Well, um, and I love that it's it's fun, it's playful, it gives people a little, a, like a little moment of distraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it also uh, create, it gamifies things. So that's kind of a marketing term that we use quite often, but gamifying something, making something playful, making something feel like a game that has yeah. a marketing component or a personal branding component to it, um, I think is really, really unique. Yeah, it's really fun. And a lot of people, well, depending on who your customer or ideal market is, a lot of people, do you want to be distracted right now? Um, so if you can share, you know, funny tips and tricks or show humor, um, I know I don't have children, but a lot of people and who are business owners are at home with the kids now and they're sharing, you know, different ways of how they're, they're co new co-workers and things like that. So, um, throwing a bit of humor in as well, I think it's really important right now. Um, anything final that you'd like to add, uh, today? I would like to say to just don't give up on social media. Um, so many people are online right now um, and even if you're not able to sell your products or services I think the brands that are able to show humanity and show that they've cared during this time are the ones that will stand the test of time and weather the storm so keep it up and don't get discouraged if you're not getting the same engagement and likes as before but know that um, people are still going, going to see your content and are going to think of you when this is all over. Perfect thank you and how can people get a hold of you? Um, if, if they need some support. Yeah, so you can send me a message. I'm linked on Lydia's live video. So you can send me a message directly through Facebook or you can email me um, at kareen at honeyoursocial.com. 
Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, everybody who listened in. Um, please do send us comments um, either now or uh, afterwards. We'll monitor those and respond as best we can if you have questions or need any type of support. Thanks so much, Corrine, for being here and have a really lovely day. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks for having me.